forming Gestapo. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. I am fierce. And this is what I wear. Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign is asking Missouri law enforcement to target anyone who lies or runs a misleading television ad. I've now been in 50... Seven states, I think one left to go. The president, when he was in Europe last week, he met with the king of Saudi Arabia. He appeared to bow. President Obama today proposed something new, something called prolonged detention. Pre-crime is where people are arrested and incarcerated to prevent crimes that they have not yet committed. It's the World Wrestling Federation. It's the Washington Wrestling Federation. They put on this show that they're bitter rivalries, you know, villains, and they really don't like each other. But behind closed doors, they buddy up for a drink and make deals. Both the Republican and Democratic parties are owned by the same global elites. And on issues that matter to those global elites, they act as one. They've wrapped themselves in the American flag, and they've talked about preserving American heritage and principles, and all the while, they're working to merge us into a new world order where our sovereignty will be destroyed, we'll lose all connection with our American heritage. With Bush, you knew exactly what you were getting. It was, uh, there was no uh, uh, iron fist in, in a velvet glove, it was just the iron fist. Whereas with Obama, you've got the velvet glove and the iron fist. You know, a very sharp guy, very smooth, knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, for that reason, far more dangerous than Bush. <laughs> well, at the end of last year, I was willing to give Obama the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was premature to write this guy off. But now that he's been in office for a while, it's obvious that he is very tight with the Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan's on Wall Street, and he is extremely compliant and pliant to the wishes of the large banks, going back to the, what we saw with Robert Rubin under the Clinton administration, uh, changing laws in favor of the banks, and he's not doing anything to stop the banks. He's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under Bush. So, in fact, he's just a continuation of Bush on the subject of markets and finance, which is the most important part of his policy right now. People who voted for Obama wanted real change and are getting platitudes, are getting a lot of nice talk, but nothing in the, in the way of concrete change is taking place. In this town, business as usual. There's one puppet master that controls the left, and there's a, a, the same puppet master controls the right. They control the Republican Party, and they control the Democratic Party. This is not a party issue. This is not a left-right issue. The question is, who should government serve? And it should serve the people. In fact, government is just a tool of the dominant minority that uses economics and government law to enforce upon a, the public various mandates. The right-left uh, paradigm in the U.S. and in, in U.S. politics is taken directly from the commercial world and the, the corporate world. In the business world, you have Coke, Pepsi, you have McDonald's, Burger King, you've got at and Verizon, you know, you've got duopolies. And a duopoly gives the illusion of there being some competition and some choice. And it looks a little bit better than a monopoly. So, for example, in communist Russia, if they had communist Russia red and communist Russia chartreuse, there would have been the illusion of choice and something akin to democracy in Russia. But they simply said, forget it, we're just going to go with red. In the U.S., they have this left-right paradigm, which, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take them out of the, the, the hard-cold fact that there is no choice. There's no social justice. There's only one choice, which is to supply more rent to the rent seekers who have now taken the whole system hostage. We've seen the limitations on government whittled away. We have seen this erosion to the point where today it seems like nobody does care. 
And right now in Washington, D.C., we have seen a fall of the republic. If the United States doesn't have its Bill of Rights and Constitution, it doesn't exist anymore. It's just more real estate, more dirt. And that's what these global corporatists want. They want to completely dismantle the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and they're doing that right now. This is the fall of the republic. Our nation is dying. We, the people that live in this fine country, need to stand up, get involved, and take the system back. It's the Bill of Rights and Constitution that we owe allegiance to, not to a political party, and not to politicians that wrap themselves in the red, white, and blue, while at the same time, they destroy everything that that sacred flag stands for. So in the old days, you used to have this globe that with 180 some odd countries, and a few of those countries had a lot of power, like the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States at various times. But today, you might better look at that globe and say that it's surrounded by huge clouds swirling around the planet. They know no national boundaries. They don't follow any specific sets of laws. And these are the big corporations. They basically control politicians around the world because they have all the money. And politicians always need money to get elected or to run their governments if they're, if they're not democratically elected politicians. They control the mainstream press, either through outright ownership or advertising budgets. They have massive amounts of lobbyists in Washington that have tremendous influence on our president and, and, and Congress. And they really are calling the shots. They form partnerships with the Chinese and the Taiwanese and the Tibetans, or with the Israelis and Arab nations, with Brazilians and Indians, with whatever country and whatever group of people has resources that they covet. And they, so for the first time in history, we really have this new form of a, of an empire. Barack Obama is a puppet of the New World Order to bring in a World Bank, to destroy the economy of this country, and to bring in global governance. And no matter how likable the fellow is, we as citizens of this country need to stand up and say no. We have to stand up to preserve a republic here and a rule of law, which is under dire threat. We don't want to live under a world government of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. I don't want to believe it, and that's probably what holds me back on it, but I'm certainly seeing enough indication that it could be true. Absolutely, because they're always talking about Mexico and the United States and Canada ending up like Europe. And there's things done politically that seem to take us in that direction. And so I think it's incumbent upon all of us as American citizens to pay attention. This move to world government is not about roses and happiness and peace and in a better life. It's about enslavement. They said in their own writings from the earliest times to the present, the world they're bringing in is to be a world where everyone who is born or would be allowed to be born would be born to serve the state. That would be their sole function. That's if they had a job for you to fulfill or a need for you. July 4th, 2009. Across the United States, citizens gather to celebrate the Republic's founding 233 years before. Most people in the crowns were aware that America was going in the wrong direction, that things were changing for the worse. But few could grasp the sheer magnitude of corruption and looting running rampant like a disease through the heart of the nation. The engine of America's greatness is not just its liberties, but the people's willingness to fight to keep them. Hundreds of other nations have had much larger populations and greater resources, but have never produced one-tenth of the wealth, science, and art that the United States has. Why? In America, you had an amazing situation because you had, you had the founding fathers who figured out that they could deconstruct the monarchy in such a way and then reproduce it with the three primary branches of government in a way that would create checks and balances and and separation of powers. So you could have room, therefore, 
for individuals to work within the context of a cooperative, which is a democratic system of government, but it would still have enough room for individuals to rise up and become profitable and self-sustaining and um, rich uh, in, in the pursuit of happiness without becoming dictatorial. Uh, but unfortunately, over the years, since all of those separation of powers have been cut away, and all of the, the, the beautiful design by the Founding Fathers has been co-opted by one corporate entity, one corporate communist entity, you don't have that anymore. So what we have, we're, we're back to where we were before the revolution. You have one monolithic state. For the first hundred years or so of the United States, after the 1700s, when we freed ourselves from uh, British rule, no corporation was, permit, was given a charter in the United States unless it served the public good. It had to prove that. And then its charter only lasted for 10 years or sometimes as long as the project to build a bridge or a canal or something lasted. But it, it had to be up for review. And it could only get charters if it, was, uh, if it was shown that it was serving the public interest. That changed primarily because John D. Rockefeller uh, kind of bribed Delaware and New Jersey to begin with into accepting a different system where he said, listen, if I pay you lots of money in terms of taxes, et cetera, uh, I want to be licensed and not have to serve the public good. I want to be able to get around that law. And it, state after state after state changed at that point. In the United States, our Constitution and Bill of Rights recognizes that individuals have innate freedoms that can never be taken away by any government. For the first time in history, the people were unbound to reach for their full potential, producing and outcompeting every other nation on Earth. The rights of free speech, self-defense, private property, due process of law, and many others ignited a revolution in human development that threatened the despotic rule of monarchs and tyrants worldwide. But the corrupt elites had studied history. They knew that great civilizations could only fall from within. And they know from previous experience and history that civilizations come and go and dwindle. They know the reasons why they come and go. Isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? Morty Strong, founder of the UN Environment Program, from his opening speech.